Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Darren and welcome to another Stitch With Me. So today, as requested, I'm going to be working on my super-sized tiger family of the jungle. And we're going to be stitching on the tiger's head. So I hope you're all well. I'm getting plenty of stitching in over the weekend. I'm going to say today's Sunday. So I was going to film this yesterday, but I didn't get around to it. <laughs> so I thought I'd do it today. Again, it's another freezing day. It's like six degrees at the moment, and it's just gone half past nine in the morning. So, and it's meant to be getting colder. So, uh, by I think it's two or three days during the week, it's going to be like two degrees in the morning. So that's going to be fun getting up at half past four. <laughs> so, uh, apologies. You hear my phone pinging in the background. So. Let's get zoomed in and hopefully you can see where I'm going to be working. I'm going to be working around here. So I have a couple of questions as well this time. <laughs> so you don't have to hear me just blubbering on about nothing. So from my last video, I showed you a chart that was getting done up for me by um, the Crossy Studio, which was of the koala. Now a couple of people have already reached out and asked when it's going to be available. So just so you know, it is on the website now. Um, so it got, Betsy completed it yesterday. I think, and she sent me a copy of it through. And I asked her when it was going to be put up in the shop. So it wasn't originally going to go in the shop until Saturday. Uh, no, Monday. But she's decided to put it in now. So it's actually available now. So if anybody is interested in that one, I know a couple of people were interested. Um, that is now available. And I'm thinking of maybe doing a stitch along with that one as well. So if you are interested, just let me know. I'll probably start that off in the Facebook page group. So for everyone who's joined the Facebook group, thank you very much. Um, it started off with just a couple and then by the end of yesterday, it's like nearly 100 people or so already. So that's fantastic. Um, so all I've got to do now is sort out the Zoom. Now that one will probably be in the next week or two. I've got a big bill to pay next week. Well, this week, should I say. Um, so once that's paid, I can then sort out the Zoom subscription and get that paid as well. So, so hopefully won't be too long and we can get that one up and running and then start doing some zoom meetups so I know there's a couple of people from the UK who want to do that so for doing those ones I mean it'll either be first thing in the morning for me here which will be night <coughs> excuse me night time in the UK or it will be last thing at night which will be first thing in the morning in the UK. So I will work it out. I mean, if needs be, I mean, we may do a couple. So one so people from the UK can join in and one for um, where everybody else is from. <laughs> so I'll have, to, I'll have to work it out and then we can get it all set up and going. It'll be fun to meet you all. Um, obviously, I know I've talked to a few of you on messages and stuff like that, but it would be fun to actually put a face to the name See if you look like where I imagine you look like. <laughs> Which is generally not the case. I'm always incorrect when I imagine people. So, right. Let's find some questions. So, the first one is from Angela. Now, this is going back to... Like when I had my mention, I went to the retreat and that. Um, she says, is there anyone, anyone locally you've been able to connect with 
for a stitchy meetup. At least pre-COVID. <laughs> um, so, no, um, let's say, I don't know anyone really. Uh, really, I don't even know many places that stitch. I know one person did message me and they actually live, well, uh, sorry, made a comment. Um, and they don't live too far away from me, actually. Um, they live in the next town down. So it's only like a 10 minute drive or something like that. But around where I am, other than that one person, I don't know anybody else. Um, I know Tia from Calm Creations, she doesn't live too far away. Um, so I may have to meet up with her at some point and have a stitchy play date. <laughs> or just eat cereal. Um, Tea is as bad as me. She has cereal for every meal if she could. So no, there's not many people around here. I was saying there's no needlework shops, well, LNSs, whatever you want to call them, um, around here either to have like stitchy meetups. I've just lost my thread. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, it's one thing I think we really need more of ever. In Australia, some like needle shops. I mean, I know there's some down in New South Wales, I think. I think. But not in Queensland, that I know of, anyway. So, like I say, I enjoyed myself at the retreat, and as I say, meeting new people. I can see what other people stitch on. It's like when you see people stitching on stuff on floss tube and that. The, Pictures and that look really, really good. But then when you see them in person, the pieces that the stitch on, they look a lot better. It's like um, Gail from Gail Phillips. So if you haven't subscribed to her, go and have a look at her stuff. She does some really good stuff. She does diamond paintings as well as cross stitching and every other thing. Uh, hard hanger. She's nearly at a thousand subscribers now. So, But I'm going to say, she's doing um, a big aid called Fish Juggler. She calls it Stanley. And I've got to say, that looks awesome on in the videos. And then I actually saw that one in real life the other Saturday. And that looks absolutely stunning. It's amazing. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be as well. <laughs> but yeah, it'd be good to see what other people are working on and see what it actually looks like. Question. Well, a couple of people have mentioned as well as say that they're not on Facebook or anything like that. So if you are interested in doing Zooms, once I've got those up and running, which I say will probably be in the next week or two, um, if you are interested in that, um, all you have to do is just send me an email uh, saying that you're interested in the Zooms. And then when I get the Zooms sorted out, I can just send you the the link so then you can join the meeting. And I can do that over through email. So that's not a problem at all. And I'll say, if you don't want to do Facebook and stuff like that, then that's fine. Um, so it just means that you can then still join in with the fun. So as I say, so if you are interested, then by all means do reach out and let me know and I can keep your details to one side and then when we're having a Zoom meetup, I can message you and say, right, we're having one on this day if you're interested and this is your code to access it. So yeah, because like I say, it'd be a shame for people who really want to do that to miss out because everyone just post it on Instagram or Facebook or something like that with the code and there's no way of them seeing it. So if you are interested, I say, just drop me an email and I'll keep your email to one side. And then when we start the Zoom, I can just message you and say, right, we're having one on this date. Feel free to join in. This is your code. So if you've never used Zoom before, um, how it works when I get Zoom invitations, there's a, a link on it. You just click on that link and it takes you straight to the Zoom meeting. And then you just have to wait for to be allowed into the group. 
So it's easy enough to work out. I didn't know about just pressing the link. It wasn't until I saw Stacy mention it on one of hers <laughs> that you just press the link. And I was always typing in the code and the password and all that lot. And you don't have to. <laughs> So, Angela asked if I've been affected by the latest lockdown in Australia. Oh, it's been on the news where they are. Um, and no, uh, we haven't been affected by that one yet. That one is in uh, Melbourne. And we're obviously Queensland. So, I've lost my streak. <laughs> hey, this is going to be one of these, uh, one of these days. Um, so, no, we haven't been affected by it. Uh, so Melbourne has gone into lockdown. It was just for seven days and then I've extended it for another seven days. This is due to the new India strain. Um, oh, I believe it's the India strain. Uh, but they've now stopped naming them like the UK strain, the India strain, and that is now like A, B, C and D or something like that. Um, I think D now is the new Chinese strain. Um, that's come out, which is even more contagious than the others, even though I know the Indian one is quite contagious. So, yeah, so the Indian one, uh, the new Chinese one, I think, is even more potent. So, we'll see how that one develops. Funny feeling. Places are going to be shut for a long time. Angela said as well, when I mentioned about my mum going through all the names of the kids, like my grandma did as well, when they wanted one, so she, her mum used to do exactly the same as well. Well, there was only two of them. <laughs> Trying to find the next question. Uh. So, um, Sue, who is helping me out on my Facebook page, you said that like, obviously with the Zooms, she's very shy when it comes to doing stuff like that. Sorry, Sue, for out in here <laughs> so she says it sounds like a really good thing but she'd be too intimidated to to join so don't feel intimidated at all if you want to join join if not don't but i gotta say i'm not i know i'm doing floss tube videos and stuff like that but i'm not actually seeing anyone when i'm doing them um but i gotta say i'm not one of the greatest people for doing stuff like that, uh, for meetups and it's kind of out of my comfort zone. Um, I'm not one of these who will stand up and talk in public. I would go red as a beetroot, literally. Um, so I'm not one of these that would normally do this kind of stuff. I'm going to say I've joined Stacey's uh, Zoom meetings a couple of times and they are, they are good fun. Um, everyone is put at ease. Um, so... All I'd say is try it. Just try it once. If it's not for you, then fair enough. Um, but I'm going to say, you don't have to feel 
like intimidated or anything like that or out of place. Um, Zoom meetings are for everyone um, and with the stitching community you're always made to feel welcome anyway no matter what you look like or how fast you stitch or anything like that you're always made to feel welcome. I'm going to say I'm not one of these who can stitch and zoom at the same time very well. <laughs> uh, whenever I'm in a zoom meeting I'll, I'll do some stitching but I don't get many stitches in because uh, you just do be having a laugh and stuff like that so it's not always just for going in and just sitting there stitching and not doing anything. You don't have to speak in them. You can just join in. Um, if you don't feel confident enough with having your face out there, you can join in with just your microphone and not a video so people can't see you. So, Or some people just have it so it's showing their projects that they're working on. So you can't see them at all and you can just hear what they're talking about. And, so yes, uh, and there goes the cat. <laughs> so yes, so they are good fun. So I, I'd say at least give one a try just to see how you go. But if you don't like it, you don't like it. No one's forcing you to do those. So it's just what you feel comfortable with. So by the sounds of it, there's a fair few people interested in doing the Zoom meetings anyway. So that should be fun. I haven't decided on the group size yet, how many to let in. Uh, we'll just go f wink first and see how it goes. Obviously, I don't know how many people you can have in at once. I think it's up to 100, I think. I don't know. We'll soon find out. to stitch so that everyone can see what I'm doing. We don't have to move around too much. <laughs> there. So if people have not seen how I start my stitches before, this is how I do it. I just go down in one hole. Come up where I want to start. Move a little bit of a tail. Go down. Come up as you can start your next leg. Pull that one so that part there just slightly disappears. Finish your cross. Oh, Tiger's calling the kittens. Pull it tight and then just run your needle across the back and it gets rid of that little tail. Hmm. What, Tiger? <laughs> And the kids are hiding from him. Now that he was playing a minute ago with Ginge, so I think Ginger's done a run and hid. <laughs> well, there's uh, another floss tuber out there called Boo's Mum 11. Um, and she just, she made a comment, and that just made me laugh, which was um, with regards to, they always say, never work with animals or children. Uh, and as soon as she, st she just floss tubes as well, and as soon as she does her videos, the boys start playing up and running right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's obviously generally a thing. Uh, <laughs> don't stick, don't do videos if you've got cats, uh, well, pets or kids. Because <laughs> you can guarantee you'll ever hear them in the background, i.e. with mine, or they just like to overtake everything. Next one is from Ginger Bidell asking if I'll be doing any diamond painting on my channel. Um, no, I haven't really thought about doing diamond painting on my channel. I mean, if there is a call for it and people are interested, then I can do like a instead of 
a stitch with me, I can do a diamond paint with me. Um, but I can do that on a, like a different day. So I still have my stitch with me, go up and then do one for diamond painting if people are interested. Um, i say I've got a couple of diamond paintings that I've, <laughs> I've got in the back that I've not, in the back, I sound like a shop. Uh, I've got a couple of diamond paintings in one of the bedrooms that I need to do. So if you are interested, then by all means, we can do a, a diamond paint with me or something like that. And we can arrange that for a different day. So maybe for putting that one up on a Thursday or a Friday or something, I don't know. But if there's another interest in, interest in those, then yeah, by all means, I can have a look at doing that. I don't know how I'll arrange it. Um, I'd have to try and sort that out for obviously the camera angle and stuff like that. But I think I'll have to do a bit of practice first. I've not done one for diamond painting for a while. So just again, let me know on that one if you're interested in diamond painting things. We can sort out diamond painting. Okay, I thought I had more questions than what I've got. Obviously not. Nope. Unless I've missed some. Give me two seconds. And as you can see, prepared as always. Somebody asked as well what the blue fabric was that I received the other day. So it's called Sorcerer. And it's from Colour Cascades over here in Australia. So she does some really nice um, colours on her stuff on her site. So I'm gonna say there's absolutely loads of different ones on there. So by all means, have a look at that. Uh, oh, this one is from Carol. I thought I had another one at least. Um, <laughs> this one is from Carol, who enjoys watching my stitch with me and stuff like that and she wants to know what does Shane do when we're both at home and I'm cross stitching he generally sits outside yes moments there it's cold but sits outside after putting the radiators on in the house <laughs> he will go sit outside and watch YouTube um what do you call it TikTok Yes, he's a big kid. Um, or something to do with cars. So, yeah. So that's what Shane generally does while I'm stitching. So he goes and sits outside. Even though it's freezing. Has his dressing gown and everything like that on. And his big, thick, woolly socks. And then sits moaning it's cold. <laughs> so, well, sit inside then, you idiot. But yeah, so he, he normally just sits out the back watching rubbish on YouTube and stuff like that. I say rubbish, it's stuff I'm not into, so it's, I say anything to do with cars, he'll sit and watch it. Like, all you can hear is like, it sounds, sometimes it sounds like he's a dentist. He's watching people like restoring cars and it's like the drilling stuff. And it just sounds like you're in a dentist. He's like, what is he watching? And 9 out of 10, if he's watching stuff like TikTok, you will come in and go, here, watch this, watch this. So, you're trying to do stuff, you have to stop so you can watch these videos that he's been watching. And it's like, oh, this is so funny. 9 out of 10, it's an animal one. So, but yeah, some of the things that he does watch on TikTok, some of them are quite amusing, some of them are boring. And some of them are like, why would you put that on TikTok? No idea. Well, that's what he does while well, I'm stitching. <laughs> I 
think that's the last one. Um, Other week that I've answered and I've still got it on here. Uh, now this one is from Rick. Now I don't know if you wanted it answered. I don't know if it watches the stitch with me or if it was meant to be answered in my normal one, but I'll answer it in this one. And if needs to be, I can answer it in the other one as well. Um, when you be tiger, shush. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, he's hiding from you. Ginger's done a runner again. <laughs> um, yes, it's, uh, so the question is, when you begin a new product, how do you decide when to use easy count gridded fabric and when not to? Do you find one easier than the other? So I definitely find the gridded fabric, so this fabric, a lot easier than plain fabric obviously because they're in blocks of 100 um, so it's easier to follow on your chart because your charts are obviously in blocks of 10 by 10 so it does make it a lot easier for stitching because you don't have to worry about doing a lot of counting because as you know my counting skills are not overly brilliant when it comes to cross stitching um, how I choose what I fabric I work on depends what I have available. Nine out of ten, I will go for this fabric, the Easy Week fabric. But as you see, I've got a couple of pieces that are not on gridded fabric. So with those ones, it was a case of like, well, what size is this fabric and what pattern can I fit on it? Uh, basically. So the fabric that I'm not gridded is what I was given. So it would be pointless having it just laying around and not using it. So it was like just working out what I could fit on there and what I couldn't fit on there. So, but I, to be fair, I don't mind using non gridded fabric because obviously when you're doing kits and stuff like that, none of that comes with gridded fabric. It's all. just plain uh, 9 out of 10 is Ada um, so I don't mind that at all um, obviously it's how I started stitching was just on the plain fabrics so I'm used to both of them but to be fair when I started stitching as well I never used to use hoops or cue snaps I used to stitch in hand now I'm not very good at stitching in hand because obviously I've got that used to Q snaps and hoops, which I don't really use much no more. So I tried doing a bit of stitching in hand and it didn't go well. <laughs> but I used to do the, I think it's, it wasn't really the sewing method as such. Um, I was a, I used to, well, I suppose it may be in sewing, sewing method in a fashion. A lot of most people do it. I couldn't go from like there to there, for example. Mine was like, I'd do this one and then I'd say, yeah, that finished there. And then I would then come out this one and down and then up like that. So that's how I used to do it. I don't know if that's classed as the same method. I'd never used to go like from the angles. I've done that stitch, yes, I've done that stitch, this one. <clears throat> so, but yeah, and then obviously I found Q-snaps and that, as I say, is history. <laughs> so, and then the next part of it, some of your projects are full cross and some others are half cross. How do you decide this? So, somebody else asked me this one earlier on. Um, so what I do is if it's a piece I want to get finished quickly, I will do it in the half cross, so 10 stitch. If it's a piece I want to really enjoy, I mean I enjoy working on all of my pieces, but if it's a piece I really want to enjoy and take my time with, 
then I will do full cross, um, if that makes sense. So although I like all my projects, and I don't not like to see them done, some of them it's like well, if I get this one done quicker, it means I can spend more time on the full cross ones and enjoy those ones. I mean, I enjoy all my patterns, but it's just obviously when you've got a fair few, you do need to see some progression. I mean, obviously. Full cross is not as quick as 10 stitch. So, obviously, if you want to see quick progress, you do 10 stitch. If you want to just take your time and enjoy the, the progress, then you do full cross. That's how I look at it anyway. Um, and then, um, and then, was, do you use pattern keeper at all? Oh, yes. <laughs> Pattern Keeper is my friend. Where am I? There, there, not there. Um, I love Pattern Keeper. It is a game changer. I used to use Goodreader, I think it was. Well, I used to use paper patterns, obviously. Um, and then I was watching Karen the Needlebug. And she used to use Goodreader and got me into using that one. And then Pattern Keeper came out and she showed that one and it's like, right, I need to try that. And then I tried that and never looked back. Absolutely love Pattern Keeper. Hmm. Well, that reminds me as well. Um, someone left a message. I think it was on my last stitch with me. Saying, please stop playing Thread Chicken. <laughs> When doing your stitch with me. Well, my last stitch with me, I think I did it about two or three times. Um, and I stopped playing Fred Chicken. I'm holding my breath while watching you. <laughs> it's like I said, it makes it a bit more entertainment to see whether or not I can do it. <laughs> I don't mind playing Fred Chicken at all. To be fair, I only really mainly end up playing Fred Chicken when uh, I'm doing a stitch with me. Nine out of ten when I'm normally stitching, there's uh You know what, we're gonna do a thread chicken again now. I need to get two more stitches. Um when I'm normally stitching, I generally find that I end up with a lot of thread left over so I don't have to do play thread chicken. But whenever I'm doing stitch with me, I always need to do thread chicken. It just adds a bit more entertainment to it. Will he or won't he get it? It's like, well, will I or won't I thread this needle? <laughs> I like using these bolting needles, but the eye is just a little bit smaller. So sometimes the thread in them can be a little bit of a pain. Next one, next one, yeah, easy manage that, easy. The hardest part now is to re-thread it onto my other needle so I can pin stitch. So yes, I use two needles, because <laughs> obviously for pin stitching the easy uh, ball tip needles are not easy to do because they're not for splitting fabric. I don't even know if I've got enough thread now to pin stitch. Sorry, I think I did not the camera. I'm not going with this one. No, I'm in the wrong spot. Oh, okay, we're going this way.
Let me through it. Anything go through on that one? Thread chicken bin stitch. Sword. <laughs> I suppose there's still a fair, fair bit of thread there. Maybe get another stitch out of that. <laughs> and that is everything. That's all the questions I've got. Again, 36 minutes in. What's with the 36 minutes? The same as that last time. Right. Where are we going next? to destroy something out there. Sorry about that, guys. Shane phoning again. <laughs> so as you can see, I've moved location for the next call. talk about. I've got no questions. Don't just love it when you have to impro. I was on a roll. I thought I knew what I was going to talk about. And then obviously Shane phoned up and put me off. So what I'm going to do as well at the end, I'm going to put some pictures of my cats that I have in the UK. Um, I mentioned them a couple of times, but I thought I'd actually show you what they look like. So there's one which is ginger and white, and that's Lucy. She's my oldest cat. She's, how old is she now? Um, she's 11, so she's 11 years old. She's the boss of the house. She always terrorizes the boys. So the boy cats are the ones that were supposed to be female, but both turned out to be boys. Um, so, and then the two boys kind of look alike in a fashion. So the long-haired one is Leo, um, which my brother has kindly renamed him Fluffy <laughs> because he's so fluffy. Um, I think he is cross with them. Main Coon or something because he's a really big cat. Um, and then the other black and white one, the short head one, is Sifa, who originally had the name Fluffy when we thought he was a female because when we got him as a kitten, he was just a ball of fluff. He, he looked like he was going to be a long head, and it turns out he was short head, and Leo turned out to be a long head. So. And the boys love bringing the feathers home. They don't bring the birds home. They come, they come over the fence with a feather in the mouth. So proud that they've got this feather. <laughs> and then they bring it in the house for you to play with the feather. So you have to throw it up in the air and then they'll catch it. They both like stealing tissues. So my mum normally has a box of tissues at the side of her. And uh, they love stealing the tissues out of the box. Mainly Leo, he's the main culprit for it. So, before my mum had a stroke, she used to have a box of tissue upstairs and a box of tissue downstairs. And you could guarantee every time she went to bed, there'd be a shredded tissue all over her bed. <laughs> Where Leo would steal one, so she used to have to start putting stuff on top of it so he couldn't get into them. So they're both little characters. They love playing with paper balls. All the toys we bought them over there, they were not interested in them. You screw up a paper ball 
and they would spend hours chasing them. They used to love the paper ball. And then I'll also add a picture as well of my rabbit that I've got over there. He's called Patch. Now, him and Lucy love playing with each other. When I was over there, you would see Lucy run past the French doors with the rabbit in tow. And two seconds later, you'll see the rabbit run past the door with Lucy in tow. They used to spend hours chasing each other around the garden. It was quite funny. So Patch is, oh, I think we worked it out, he's six, uh, five years old now. Oh. It's definitely a character. We did have two. We had Patch and Snowy. We got them both at the same time. Obviously, as, as they matured, they used to start fighting in the cage. Obviously, dominancy. So we decided to get them neutered. Now normally it's a bit, vets don't really like to do rabbits because they're really hard to sort out with regards to the anaesthetic in that. So Patch came through the anaesthetic fine. Snowy was a bigger rabbit, but he didn't, he didn't come round from the anaesthetic. It went all well up until they tried to bring him round and then he had heart problems and didn't make it, bless him. He was a really cool rabbit as well. He was more friendly than Patch. So we ended up with just Patch. Hmm. He's a character in himself. If the French doors are open, he will run in the house. Run all, oh, take a lap of the living room and then fly out the doors. And then he'll come flying back in again and dive over the sofa or the tables and knock everything off. <laughs> and then run back outside again. He's a character and a half, that's for sure. So, yeah, as you can see, I like my animals. If I've got a picture as well, I'll insert a picture of my mum's dog, the, one, the only one that she's got left now, because, as you know, she had... A, uh, her main one put down not long since um, so this one is if I've got it it will be Meg she's a toy poodle and she's a character and a half and all um, but she always used to sit on the back of the chair and look out the window and bark at anyone going past always but since mum had her other dog put down Kizzy she doesn't do that no more. She just sleeps all day. So. Every now and then she will. Bark at people walking past. But apparently she doesn't do it very often now. She always just wants to be. On someone's lap. So she's definitely a lap dog. She, Meg actually got banned from three poodle parlors. <laughs> um, she used to, she wasn't too bad when she was getting a clipped as such, but when you go near her feet, she didn't like it, so she used to snap. Well, not snap, she used to mouth you. Um, so she didn't like being clipped. So she got banned from three poodle parlors. Um, and then we found a vet that would clip her. And they said it would take as long as they take, they would start clipping her until she, you could see that she didn't want to be clipped no more. And then they would leave her and let her have, play around with her for a bit. And then they would go back and do a bit more and so on. So it used to take them about three hours to clip her. Very much only a toy poodle. And my mum just used to have them clipped fully. So none of this pom-poms and stuff like that. They got clipped um anyway the pet shop over the road from where i lived over there decided that they would give her a try and see how she went so we 
gave her a try. And my mum told them what she was like. So they was like, right, fair enough. Anyway, she was good as gold. Um, so they agreed to continue doing her. She had one warning. Um, I think she had a sore on her leg and they didn't realise. And when they was clipping her, they caught the sore, so she snapped. So she had a warning. <laughs> um, that if she did it again, that they, they wouldn't allow her to be clipped there anymore. But ever since then, she's been fine. It's the only dog I know who's ever been banned from three poodle parlours. Well, three dog groomers. But again, she was one of my auntie's dogs that we inherited. <laughs> Same as Kitty. My auntie has a habit, she gets a dog, and then if it's not trained within, or doing what they want within a certain time, she gets rid of her. <laughs> Um, or if they're too much for her to handle. I mean, my auntie's not a spring chicken no more. She's getting on a bit. So, Kizzy, I mean, Kizzy was a real well-tempered dog, but she used to get under her feet, and she always used to trip her up. I mean, auntie wasn't, wasn't very good on her feet, so she kept tripping her up. So she asked me more if we wanted her. So I was on holiday and came back, and we got another dog. <laughs> it's like, hey, oh, where did this one come from? So yeah, we've also inherited a cockatiel like my auntie. He was called Sam. He was quite funny, except for when he used to go off at six o'clock in the morning because he would hear the birds when they woke up. So he would start chirping along with them. But he used to do a couple of impressions. He used to do the Laurel and Hardy theme tune but he always used to get stuck on one part. <laughs> so he used to repeat the same part over and over again. Uh, so he used to do the other one, Hardy theme tune. He used to do the squeaky ball. Now that one was so annoying, that one when he used to do that one, because he would not know when to stop. So he used to do the squeaky ball. Um, what else did he do? He used to do the wolf whistle. Uh, he used to do a car alarm. I don't know where the heck he picked up the car alarm from, but he used to do a car alarm. Um, but he was so soft and gentle. Uh, it was a really nice cockatiel. And when I used to have my German Shepherd, when we used to let him out, first thing he used to do was go and steal the dog's head. So he wasn't bothered about going and sitting anywhere else. It was always onto the dog's head. But my German Shepherd, she was so placid. Um, she didn't mind at all. She just didn't walk around with this cockatiel on her head. <laughs> it was so funny. But it was one of these birds that you used to love being out, but when you used to try and get him in, he'd just sit on your finger, and you'd walk towards the cage, and as soon as you got to the cage door, he'd fly off. It's like, really? Come on. You need to go in now. You've been out for like six hours. So, but he was a, he was a really cool bird. I would say the end, I'm going to say all the hours, the shifts I was working, I wasn't getting to bed till like two o'clock in the morning. And obviously he started every morning about six o'clock. Even though it was covered up, he could hear the other birds and it was just getting too much. So my mum rehomed him and he, she took him, well her and my auntie took him to a place who keeps cockatiels. And he has a an aviary outside or something like that. And he had a fair few cockatiels. So he was going in there. And he used to have one cockatiel that was in the house. Anyway, he saw Sam. And uh, he fell in love with him. Because uh, of the noises and that, that he used to make. Um, that's there. Trying to work out where I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, he fell in love with him and decided that he was going to keep him in the house. And the one that he used to have in the house, he kicked it off in the aviary because the one in the house didn't do anything. So, so, yeah, so he fell in love with him straight away. So he used to know it was going to be going to a good home and was going to be looked after.
We actually had a cockatiel in the garden the other week. I'm not, uh, they are a bit over here, but I've never really seen them flying around over here. It's always the cockatoos and stuff like that. And yeah, there was this cockatiel just in the garden, pecking away the grass. And we was like, is that someone's bird that's escaped? So we were going out to try and see if we could catch it <laughs> and see if anyone had lost a cockatiel. But it turns out they actually are quite common over here in in the wild. So I was like, okay, he must have just been a wild one, but he was on his own, which is quite strange. I thought he might have been in a pair or something like that. I don't know, he was just merrily sitting in the garden, pecking away the grass. It was obviously after something. But I've never seen it again. Now, it was only the once. I've not seen it back again. So, I don't know what happened to that one. But it is quite cool over here when you get like, the, the parrots and that just land in your garden. Because obviously we have king parrots and I can't remember the other ones. They're like a garden parrot or something like that. Um, but they're quite nice. They just look like a big budgie. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Uh, just, I just where I am now. Um, but yeah, they're just like a big budgie. They're the same colour as a, as a, a budgie. Just like ten times the size of them. So we get them and we get galahs. Galahs are good because they like eating bindis. Um, now if you don't know what bindis are, they're a weed over here. Um, but when they go to seed, the seeds are really, really spiky. And they just stick in you. So if you don't realise you've got bindis and then you walk in the garden, you've got all these bindi seeds stuck in your feet. And boy, do they hurt. Luckily for us, we've only got one small section in our garden that has bindies. So, obviously, we mow that area more than the rest of the garden, just to keep them down so they don't go to seed. But it's fun when the, the galahs come, um, because they always eat them. So the galahs are the pink and grey parrots. Well, they're part of the parrot family, same as cockatiels, uh, cockatoos. So yeah, so you do get some interesting colourful birds over here. The main ones are obviously the lorikeets. Now those, we only get those mainly when we've got some bottle brush trees. Well, that's what I call them, the ones that look like bottle brushes. And um, we've got a couple of those in the front garden. So when those start flowering, which they are at the moment, actually, it means that we should get a lot of lorikeets come visiting to get the nectar out of them. Well, they're all right, but they are noisy. Especially when you've got about 60 of them in a tree. There is actually a, a spot near where Shane's mum is, where I used to work at the petrol station. Um, and there's a tree there. And all the lorikeets congregate in this tree every night. So as soon as the sun starts going down, all these lorikeets congregate in this one tree and there is absolutely hundreds and hundreds of them. Now, you can always tell who the locals are to who outsiders are. Because when it gets towards night time, no locals park their car under these trees. All the outsiders just park the car and not thinking about it. And when they come out, the car is absolutely covered in bird poop. <laughs> and I mean, literally covered. It could be a black car when they went in, it'd be a white car when they come out. But yeah, I've never seen so many lorikeets congregated in one place in my life. <laughs> there's absolutely thousands of them. And I don't know why it's just, I think there's about three trees there that they all decide to congregate in. And they do it every night. Um, now, when I was at the petrol station, I used to work night shift. And you could always tell when the sun was coming up because all the lorikeets would start going off. And when you've got hundreds and hundreds of lorikeets all going off at the same time, I'm like, I'm so glad I don't live around this area. <laughs> they are noisy. Not as noisy as the cockatoos, 
but they are noisy. So you always knew when the sun was coming up. Which was good for me, because then I knew it was nearly home time. I used to finish at six o'clock in the morning. close to an hour I think I'm gonna say it's gonna be hard to do it in two sections because Shane decided to film me so I think we're almost at an hour so I will finish this stream and then we will call it a day and get this uploaded ready for well edited and uploaded ready for Wednesday So the last, the last one I did, it was a bit late going up, because I forgot to edit it and put it up. And I always like to listen to it first just to make sure it sounds all right before I post it. So it was Wednesday night, and I was like, I haven't even done the editing on this yet. So I had to get that all done up. So by the time that was all done, it was late Wednesday night. So then I had to... While I was working, I had my earphones in, <coughs> listening to it, just to make sure it sounded all okay. Just in case I needed to do any further editing. And so, hence the reason it went up a bit later last week. But hopefully this week, it should be up on time. Because what I will do while I'm editing it, I will get it all done and then listen to today. So then when it comes to Wednesday, it can go straight up. Oh, just so you know as well, um, if you do start seeing more vid uh, adverts in videos for any bond, any channel that you watch, um, generally that is not our fault now. Um, YouTube, in their infinite wisdom, have decided to start adding adverts into people's videos. So, hopefully, I'm going to say, I mean, Normally I can choose if I want the video uh, adverts in or not. But just so that you are aware that every now and then you may get more adverts than normal due to YouTube. Because what they've started doing now as well is, I don't know why they've started doing this, but for anyone who does YouTube channels, if they're monetized, which means that they earn money for doing the videos, it goes on the views and any adverts and stuff like that. Um, they are now taxing people outside of America for American viewers. So if you're in America and you, <coughs> excuse me, if you're in America and you watch, say, my channel, I will then be taxed on you watching my channel. So they had, you had to fill in all your tax details to see how much they would tax you. If you didn't fill in all your tax details, then they would take 24% of any earnings that you make from American viewers. Which I thought was a bit wrong, especially for like small channels, for example, like me, where you don't earn that much money as it is from YouTube. And they're then gonna take nearly a quarter of it because you haven't read Take three, Shane again. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna... So, yep, yeah, change. I want to move stuff so you can sit down. There you go. So, so yeah. So as I'm saying, so, so now you have to put all your details in. And if you don't put them in, then YouTube will tax you twenty five, well, twenty four percent of your earnings for viewers in America not anywhere else just America so I don't know what's going off there why they've all of a sudden decided that they're going to start taxing people for American stuff I have no idea 
So but you can put your tax details in if you wish to. And then if you're in certain countries, it will tell you if you are exempt from paying tax or anything like that. So I looked into it just to see what kind of information that they wanted. And putting my tax details in means that I would only get taxed 5% of any views, earnings I earn from viewers in America. So I thought, well, that's better than 24%. So, but we will see how it goes. So yeah, so just so that you are aware, from now on, if you do start seeing more adverts in other people's videos, that will be why, because YouTube, I think it's from, was from the 1st of June. I think it was 1st of June, or if not, it's from the 1st of July, one of them. Um, they've said that they will now start putting adverts in people's videos whether they're monetized or not so if you do start seeing awesome spike in adverts you will know why obviously they're trying to get as much money as they can for some reason even though they're worth billions well they're obviously trying to get more money from other companies and other people and everything so just so that you are aware I thought I'd let you know on that part Right, and that's where we're going to end it today. Just mark off where I've stitched. So what we done? 180 stitches, which is about average for a stitch with me. So I'm going to end it there. So again, any questions or comments, please feel free to drop those down below, or send me a message on email, which is dizzystitcher at gmail .com, or on Instagram, which is dizzystitcher. And we can get those questions answered for you in my next stitch with me. So, again, thanks very much for hanging out with me, guys. And so as soon as I get the zooms and that done, we'll get those sorted out so we can all have a meet up. And hopefully have a laugh. In the first one or two, will probably be a bit nervous for everybody who's never done them before. I don't know what to say. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, again, thanks again for watching guys. Take care. I'm gonna play, and f see if I can get this pin stitch done. Um, so again, thanks for watching, and we will see you in my next video, which will be my normal update video. So thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.